Hello class, this is the first tutorial for a text mining class and um, in this tutorial we will introduce how to use R to do the sentiment analysis. Basically we want to uh, classify the sentiment for a movie review, for a certain movie review. So let's first look at our data. Well, we're going to use this movie one data set. So basically, it has two variables, two features. This label column represents the sentiment label. So it can be this movie review can be negative or positive. And the other feature is the review, which each review is a chunk of taxes. So it is totally different from we what we used to do what we used to use like those different features with either like um, like numeric features or categorical features this time we we gonna like analyze those text this chunk of text so let's get started so these are a few packages uh, Gonna use in this tutorial. The first one is TM. TM is stand for the stands for the text mining. So TM package is used for text mining in R. And word cloud is to generate those pre very pretty word cloud. And RYCAP, uh, you should be familiar with RYCAP package. It was it it was used for so many different uh, classification algorithms and also the evaluation methods. And the next one is Snowball C. Snowball C package is used for the word stemming. And carrot, carrot is used for partitioning the data set. And R minor, well, we will use one evaluation uh, matrix from R minor package. And CurlLab is used for building the support vector machine classifier. And R part is used for the uh, classification and regression trees. Well, if you haven't installed this, this uh, packages, please do. And I already installed them, so I just load them. So next, we're going to import our movie data set, movie review data set. Um, well, you can use the file choose like we used to use before, or I can set uh, my my uh, directory and directly import this movie data set. And this header equals to true, so we have those header label and review header available, and strings and factors equals to false, which means um, well, those will be imported as characters instead of factors. Let's check the structure of our movie review data set. So basically, we have two variables. The first one is the review contents we, we, uh, I just showed you before. The second one is label. Both of them are now character type. and. But we want the label to be factor with two levels, positive or negative. And let's summarize these two variables. So the label, so basically we have 2,000 reviews. And among these 2,000, we have 1,000 active and 1,000 positive, which means we have a very balanced data set. And if we see the proportion of our label variable, we can see like each of them take up to 50% of the reviews. Well, next we want to partition our data set into training and testing data set. We will not do the tenfold or nfold cross validation yet. We will not only like randomly partition our data set into training test one and test two. Well, like we used to do it before, um, test uh, training a, a training data set is 50% of our total data set and testing one, testing two are like 25% 25, 25 each. 
so remember to set seed. So we will have this uh, random result each time we run this code. And we will use this create data partition function, uh, which is from the library carrot. So let's run this one. And this create data partition function, if you still remember, will generate a random set of index, row index, and those row index will compose our training data set. And the, and the rest uh, row index that are not selected by this function will, will, will construct our testing data set. And we further partition our testing data set to 25% and 25%. So test test one and test two both um, both has like twenty five percent of our data set. So after you partition your training and testing data set, you can check the results. So we will use this enro summary and prop table functions to see the distributions and also the number of rows in both uh, training and testing data set. So for training, we have 1,000 reviews. And for testing, each testing um, consists, consists of 500 reviews. And because we randomly partition them, um, the distribution probability for an active and positive class are 50%. Well, next, we'll start to analyze the text using TM library. Well, the, the mean function we're going to use is TM um, underscore map. But before we use that function, we need to first transform our review content into a corpus. Well, there are two approaches we're going to introduce here to, try, uh, to do this step. The first one is use the vector source first. Well, the vector source will turn your reviews into a vector of text and then you put a corpus function outside this vector source function. It will turn this vector to a corpus. So we only first turn all our uh, review from training data set to a corpus named train corpus n. And it should still has uh, contains 1,000 reviews. Well, if you have any questions about the functions, you can always use this question mark and the function name to uh, see their detailed explana explanations. The second approach to, to transform the review to a corpus is using this data frame source. But before using data frame source, you need to first turn this review into a matrix and then uh, turn it into a data frame and then turn it into a, a corpus. So these two approaches serve the same purpose. Well, well, the next step is start to use this tm underscore map function. Um, it is from the library tm. It is text mining library used in R. And let's first check our first review. Well, you can see. Um, Well, the first step we're going to do is to change all the letters into lowercase, lowercase letters. But you can see we already have all lowercase text content, which means this two lower function here doesn't make, uh, doesn't make any difference. But we're still going to introduce you here. Um, so you can use them later. So here you can see you have a backslash n. Uh, this is the sample for line change. So it means, well, you start a new line here. 
So uh, we will use this T um, underscore map. The first parameter is the training corpus you just created. And if you want to perform the uh, lower cases function, you use to lower it here in the second parameter. And well, step one here is another like newly created corpus that um, contains all lowercase characters, letters. Well, if you want to see the first review in this corpus, well, if you only use this single um, single square bracket, let's check. Sorry, let's check this one. Well, you did not see the content of the review. It just gives you, okay, this is the corpus, and you have one document. If you want to look into the review content, you need to put double uh, square brackets. So this is the review content. Similarly, if you only use one uh, square bracket and put a range from review 2 to 3, it doesn't show you either. But if you use the inspect function, and inside this inspect function, you put in the range of reviews, it will present you with both of the review contents. Well, lastly, if I embed a help function inside of the inspect function, well, I can see here, I set this parameter equals to three. I can see the top three reviews, sorry, top three reviews from this corpus step one. So basically, basically this two lower function change every character, every letters every letter to lowercase. Well, the next step is remove the numerical values from the corpus. Well, we only want the uh, important words as our features to do the sentiment prediction, sentiment classification. So we want to eliminate all the numbers. So here we will use this remove numbers function from tm map function. So this one is used as our second parameters. Um, the first parameters is a corpus from the first step. So it is step one. So now we will create a new corpus step two. Step two eliminating eliminated all the numbers. So let's see the first review. So basically it removes all the numbers. Well, the third uh, third step is remove stop words or some certain personalized words you created. So what are stop words? Stop words are some words are some words that doesn't make any doesn't have a lot of meanings. For example, the propositions or the articles and so on and so forth. So we want to first eliminate those words which doesn't contribute much to the sentiment analysis. So we will now change the, um, the parameter to remove words. And what words we want to remove, we include another parameter in this third place, stop words. Well, we we want to like eliminate those stop words from English. Well, the default value for these stop words is English. So if you put nothing inside this parentheses, it basically also remove uh, English re uh, stop words. So let's run this removing stop words. And then we check the first review again. So you can see like the first sentence now 
transformed to two teen couples go church party. So they eliminate the word to this proposition. And well, you can also like specify your specific word you want to remove. For example, here,、um, I want to remove this word too. So I just instead of stop words, the third parameter、um, is the word too. And let's see. Now the first sentence came to、uh, become teen couples go church party. Well, you can have a set, like a combination of words you want to remove from your corpus. So in the third parameter, I use the combine function and include four different words. So I want to remove these four.、Uh, four <clears throat> words because this is movie. These are movie reviews. So movie film films appears in every basically every um every reviews every review frequently. So、uh, I want to remove those、uh, unnecessary words. Also, you can compose a parameter include not only the stop word but also the Specific words you want to remove together into a my stop words. So this my stop words is、uh, your personalized stop words list, and then you put it in the set third parameter. It will it will remove all the words from this list. So now we do not have any words from this list. Well, the fourth step is to remove those pun punctuations. Well, I will change the second parameter to remove punctuation. Use the step three C here, and let's check. Let's see the first review. So now all the punctuation, such as a question mark, the period, and this comma, are all removed. And the fifth step is to remove all the wet spaces. So those、uh, backslash n we discussed before, they still here. They're still here, but we want to remove all this. So we we will use this this stripe white space function inside this tm map function. So let's run this. So you can see now,、uh, instead of sentences in the first review, now the first review become、uh, a list of words. Well, the above five steps, such as、um, remo removing stop words, re removing white spaces, removing like numbers, and change them all to lower cases, are we called the、uh, pre-processing in text mining? So why do we want to do this pre-processing? Because in this review、uh, sentiment analysis, we want to like predict the sentiment, positive or negative, for each review in our testing dataset, and the、uh, target variable is the label. While the predictors, the features we want to use, are back our words, which are the each、uh, the word frequency. Content in each review, so that's why we want to transform those word,、uh, those reviews into like a list of words. Well, the next step is called stem. So, what is stem?、Uh, in linguistic, stem is、um, a part of word. So, so here is a stem example.、Um, now we have three words: beauty, beautifully, and beautiful. 
and the stem version, the stem for these three words is beauty. So why do we want like the words to convert it to their stem in our training data set? Because if, for example, we do not convert them to their stem, so beauty, beautiful, and beautifully stand for um, three words. Well, I know like we know that they're describing something positive. So in the training that I said, we maybe one review has beauty, another review have beautiful. But if we have the third word beautifully in a testing data set, based on this two word from training, we could not know that this beautifully is also positive. But if we all use this beauty, which is their stem, so basically this beauty appears three times, twice in the training and once in the testing. So in the testing, we can like imply this beauty is also positive. So that's why we use their stems instead of their original word, words. So here is another example of stems. Um, there are four sentences and we compose a corpus based on these four sentences. Then I use this stem document uh, function to convert every word in this corpus to their stem, uh, to its stem. So let's check the second sentence. The original ones apply for our open associate position. Now it, it, it was converted to apply for our open associate position. Well, so we want, we want this stem document to work on the words from our review in the corpus. Well, this line of code is supposed to um, transform all the words to their stems. Unfortunately, if you're using a Mac Pro or Mac Air like I, like I do, this line of R code doesn't make any changes to the words. But if you're using a Windows machine, well, it will probably work like I did. I tried it on my desktop and it successfully gave me the stamp for stamps for all the for all the word in our reviews. For example, here continue it converts to this and things and audience and really and so on and so forth well we will talk about the solution for this problem later well next uh oh this is the end of the pre-processing we basically use this tm underscore map function from tm library and change the second parameter to to lower remove number n remove numeric numbers remove stop words remove uh, a lot of things so now for each review we have like a list of standardized words well we want to calculate the word word uh, word frequency for each review so we want to transform the corpus to a document term matrix so what is this document term matrix well imagine now okay we have like in our training data set we have 1000 reviews right so this matrix will contain 1000 rows so each row stands for one review well, then this function will combine all the distinct words together. So for example, uh, you re review one has like 10 words, review two has uh, another 10 words, but they have five duplicates. So in total, they have 15 words. So if we build this matrix based on this two, reviews 
we will have 15 distinct words. And these 15 distinct words will be 15 columns. Therefore, if we have, for example, 1,000 rows here, and in total we have distinct words, how many? Let me, for example, 30,000. 30, well, then we will have we will have a really huge matrix with one thousand rows and thirty thousand um, thirty thousand uh, sorry thirty thousand columns. And I drew a table as an example. So, for example, we have seven reviews, and this seven review contains seven distinct words. So if word one appears twice in review one, the cell here equals to two. Well, if word three doesn't appear in the review one, the frequency is zero. So basically, the values inside this document matrix, document term matrix, are the frequencies for each word in the review. So hopefully I explain it clear, clearly here. Well, there's another unfortunate. If I you if you use uh, Mac Pro or Mac Mac Air, well, we haven't figured out why yet. Probably is the version of R or R Studio or Java, but it did work in a uh, on a Windows machine but it will throw out this errors here. So we could not transform this corpus into this matrix. Well, if you are using a Windows machine, or like, um, you can probably try this line of R code. But the, if this, R, R, uh, this line of R code throw you in this error, well, we figure out we can directly use this document term matrix function. So this string corpus M is the original corpus without any pre-processing. And we can add more parameters inside this document term matrix function to do the pre-processing. For example, here, if we set this remove numbers equals to true, remove punctuation equals true, so on and so forth. It basically serves the same purpose as the function tm underscore map. Uh, so we, if you use this line of R code, you, you do not need to do the the pre-processing, three pre-processing six steps I said before, you can do it here in one line of R code. And this one doesn't throw us with any errors. That's really lucky. Well, it may take a few seconds. Okay, so let's see the dimension. So basically it is, um, so here like 1,000 rows, 22, more than 22,000 columns. So basically 1,000 uh, reviews contains over 22,000 distinct words. Well, some words are randomly like rare appear. For example, in 1,000 review, it only appear once or twice. So we will remove those sparse terms only uh, remain those frequent terms and you can go check the remove sparse term here so this is a sh the second parameter is a threshold to eliminate those sparse terms let's check our dimension again after eliminate those sparse term so now we remain 20 words, frequent words here. So next, we, will, we want to display the most frequent 20 words from this 200 frequent words. So we know that each column stand, stands for um, a distinct word. 
So we use this column means function to calculate the average frequency for each word. And then we sort them in descending order. And then we only select the top 20 to display. So you can see here like few movie, one lakh or some words um, have, the high, have the highest frequency. Well, if I then use a mean function, we can calculate the average frequency for all these top 20 words. So basically, it is calculate the average, the mean, for these 20 numbers. So it is more than 1.7. So each word appears averagely at least twice. almost twice sorry and next we will show the frequency for this 20 20 words in a bar plot so you can see well film and movie are are two words that are that has the highest frequency sorry here well next if we only want to like compare the average frequency and if the zeros are not counted in averaging. So for example here, before we have, we calculate, for example, for word one, we like um, some two zero seven three two zero five and divided by the number of reviews which is seven well now we want to eliminate those zeros so we only want add up those non-zero values and divide it by one two three four five so this is how we want in this function well firstly we first transform them into a matrix and then we convert zeros to NA which are missing values and then we can directly use this col column means function again but remove those NAs, remove those missing value and then sort them in descending order and display only the 20 top, the top frequency words. You can see that if we exclude all the zeros, we can have like a higher frequency calculation. And the average frequency of these 20 words are more than almost 2.5. And then you can, we can also plot, bar plot those 20 frequent words. Well, well, like we did before, but uh, using the tm underscore math function, we construct our own stop word list including some specific words such as movie, film, review, uh, one, two, so on and so forth. So here we like do this step again without the TM map. So we include the one, two, three, make, get, movie, movie, film, and films. Those words doesn't make any contributions to positive or negative sentiment analysis. So we compose this my stop word list. Oh, here, sorry, we still use this TM map function to remove these words from our training corpus. So after removing those training corpus, we can do this again, the document term matrix, removing stop words uh, to lower stemming and so on and so forth.
So remember before we have about that matrix has about 22, more than 22,000 columns, which means now we should have less. Well, it'll eliminate almost one, 100 words. And then you, we can also remove those sparse terms. So before we have 200, uh, frequent, uh, 200 frequent words, now we only have 195 with frequent words. So like five words such as this few movie are limited. So after we eliminate, after we move, removing our specified, our personalized stopping words, let's see um, the top 20 most frequent words again. Let's see, only the 20, so... Now we no longer have movie, film, so on and so forth. The most frequent word is lack. The second one is character. Character. And the average for more, most average frequency for these 20 words is 1.194. Well, you can also like plot it using this bar plot function. Next, we're going to use this word clock function to um, generate 30 words. Well, this word clock function is a function used to uh, virtualize it for virtualization. It can generate some really pretty word clock based on the frequency. Depending on frequency of the words, it will adjust the size of the word and the color of the words. So here, the first parameter is for it, it is the word itself. This one is a frequency, the size, the color. So here's the example of this word clock. It's really pretty. You could paste it in your paper or project. Well, next we will build the sentiment analysis classification models using the term frequency. Uh, we calculate using the document document term matrix uh, for the training data set. So we're going to use those uh, term frequencies from training data set to predict the sentiment of reviews in our testing data set. First of all, we will first convert this matrix and save it as a train back out word frequency. And then we add uh, an additional column to this matrix, uh, the label. So as you remember, this label is positive or negative for each review in our training data set. And then this one will, this line of Oracle will compose as our training data set. So let's see our structure. Basically, we have 201 features in total. The one is label, which is a, a factor variable with two levels, negative and positive. Well, the rest 200 are the words we selected from our training data set. And then we save the back of words generated from our training data set for later usage. We save them into train BOWM. And the length of this, this list is 200. So this is a bag of words, frequent words. Well, next we will do the same thing for our testing one. We first convert this testing, the review content from testing one into a corpus. And then similarly, we want to like uh, 
convert it into a document term matrix to calculate the word frequency. But the words we use are those words from training data sets. So basically, uh, if those words that does in our testing data set but does not like, exist in our training data set, we just delete them. We just, just remove them. We only leave those words that are same as our training data set. And then only calculate those frequency in testing data set. So basically, still we have 200 words. So because te uh, both for testing one, testing two, they have 500 re reviews. So this matrix basically contains 500 rows and 200 columns. Those 200 are those words from training data set. And then we transform the format from document term matrix to a matrix. And save it as text BOM frequency, frequency M. We're gonna use this one as our testing um, testing data features so therefore we have like one label 200 features uh, 200 predictors in training data set similarly test in testing data set we also have like 200 same predictors and then we use this data frame function to convert to combine first the label and then those 200 words frequency into my our actual testing data set, test one data M. So let's see the structure. Basically, the structure should should be the same as our training data set, like 20, 201. Let's see, 201 variables, one is factor, the rest are the words. Yes, they're the same. Well, next, well, you can also see the summary. It will calculate the average, the maximum, minimum, and so on and so forth. Well, next, we will build this sentiment classification on the training data set and then testing those reviews and predict the sentiment for the reviews in testing data one and testing data two. So in this tutorial, we will use the C tree, uh, G48, and C50. Those are decision trees. And we will also use naive base uh, support vector machine and artificial neural network. First of all, let's build a C tree classifier. Um, you need to first load a library party and then we will build this C tree model on our training data set. So this Y, if you remember, is right here. It is a label positive or negative for each review in training data set. And the model is called to be the back of word C tree model. So let's plot our tree. It looks looks really messy, but let me zoom in. So here you see those black, really dark blocks. These are positive. Positive, 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 positive. And those light color bars are negative. So basically, this node, this leaf, is positive, positive, po negative, 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 positive, negative, positive, negative. So basically, you see which like which uh, which class level take the majority. Well, this leaf belongs to which 
class. So let's go through one path together. So if we have this word bad, less or equal to zero. So if we don't have bad, and if we have more perform word, and if we have, and then if here at this node split, if we have more than one great word, well, this review is positive. So that's how this C tree make decision based on the string data set. Well, next we will build the uh, we will generate the prediction for the testing data one, the reviews from testing data one. So. And then we will use this confusion metric or confusion matrix function to evaluate the prediction results. So the positive, we set positive equals to positive, and we can generate the confusion matrix. Here is our confusion matrix. If you still have questions about confusion matrix and those, uh, what are the accuracy, uh, sensitivity, and so on, are uh, stand stands for. Stand for. You can go back to our previous uh, videos. And also this M metric, this uh, this evaluation uh, function, if you remember, they're from our manner library. Our manner package, so we can go ahead like this general accuracy, uh, true positive rate, precision, F measure all together. So the first parameter is still our precision. Uh, sorry, first parameter is still our prediction. So we have predict a list of labels, positive, negative, or so on. Uh, so on and so forth for each review, and this is their actual label. So, so the accuracy actually is not that high. It's only fifty-seven percent. Basically, if it is fifty percent, it's random guessing. So we are like a little better than random guessing. Well, but as you know, we only use the back of word, which is uh, like the word frequencies as our features. Later, we'll add more like sophisticated features, so the performance will get better and better. Well, next we will use J48 classifier. This is from our Weka. Well, it will take a long time to plot this one, so I will skip this plot function. And the summary. Sorry. So this one, this like, this accuracy is based on the training data set. So they first built a J forty eight decision tree, and then this one, this this results are are the evaluation. Based on the training again, the training data set. Well, then we use the this model to predict and see the prediction results evaluations. So the uh, this this accuracy is lower than C tree. This one is almost fifty percent. So basically, randomly guessing. Well, uh, because this one is from our Weka, we can directly use evaluate Weka classifier. This function, with this function, you do not you need the predict and this evaluation anymore. It includes all of these functions. Well, the next one is C50 classifier. It is from the C50 library.
because the C50 is very similar to G48, so the performance are similar too. Next, we will use naive base models from both E1071 and also Arweka. So similarly, we train the naive base model using the string dataset with this 200 words frequency and also the label and then predict the the uh, sentiment using te uh, test uh, in testing data set so you can see still like the performance is not very good and then we can use them in our weka using our weka library And then we will use two black box um, classifier. One is kernel support vector machine from Curlab. Next one is artificial neural network. Similarly, let's see the performance. Well, well, you can see support vector machine. Well, it performs much better than decision tree and naive basic models. And let's see the neural network's performance. Well, it will take 5 to 10 minutes, 10 minutes to run. These are the evaluation results from the artificial neural network classifier. So it performs much better than decision trees and new, uh, naive basins. However, it still doesn't outperform the support vector machine. Well, next we can use the K nearest neighbor classifier from Arweka, and this um, and also similarly, we evaluate with the similar steps. Basically, we we reviewed every. Uh, classifier we have learned from last class, our data mining class. So still the accuracy is really low for K nearest neighbors. And well the rest of our codes are for text Two. Remember, we partition text into text one, text two. Well, the steps are fundamentally the same, but you can just change the text one to text two. Uh, if you're interested, you can also try these R codes offline. So basically, that's what we covered in this tutorial. So if you have any questions, please let us know in class. Thank you. Bye.